love so mighty and so true. Mary's my soul's best song. Faithful love and service to, to him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Souls in danger, look above, Jesus completely saved. He will lift you by his love out of the angry wave. He's the master of the sea, fellows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. All right. Thank God for that love that lifted me on Calvary. Amen. You can be seated. Appreciate you coming out for the midweek service. It's been a beautiful week this week. The Lord's blessed us with, and uh, we're looking forward to our service tonight. Choir's going to sing here in just a moment after we pray. And then, of course, we've got a couple of specials. I think Cassie's going to sing tonight. And then, uh, Lord willing, we're going to be back in Psalm 51 for our third message in our series uh, from uh, that whole entire psalm as we look at David as he made his way back to God. And uh, tonight we're going to break down verse number 1. Uh, but we've got some other passages we're going to look at in Romans tonight and some other places. But thank you for being here. And uh, we'll keep things moving along so the teens can have time when the choir breaks to go over for their ministry. But uh, it's been a good week. Uh, I appreciate your prayers this week for the church and different folks here. We'll take some prayer requests here in just a little bit and slow things down a little bit. And some praise reports uh, as well. And uh, we'll have several good praise reports to some things that happened through our school this week. And we're very thankful for that. And if you have a brief word of testimony tonight to the goodness of God in your life, I'd welcome you to share that as well. Amen. In heaven, it's just nonstop praise and th singing and praise and more singing. Amen. And the best preacher in the universe is there, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry, it's not one of your favorite preachers today. Say amen right there. And, uh, but uh, the Lord's good to us tonight. We're going to seek him in prayer. And uh, after we pray, our choir is going to sing for you. But thank you again for coming. I'm going to ask Brother Todd to pray for us. Fellas, he's got the little teal-colored microphone. So, Brother Todd, if you would, would you pray for us? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you with a thankful heart again tonight. Yes. God, I just want to thank you again just for the privilege and opportunity to be back in our house. Amen, yes. We're like-minded people tonight. I pray we've all prepared our hearts and minds to come to one purpose tonight, is that's to worship you and yes, and amen. truth. You know, we do have a lot to praise you for. Just uh, health and strength, another day that you've given us, another day of life. Amen. So God, we come on behalf of our pastor now, Lord. I just pray that you continue to bless as he ministers our hearts with Psalm 51. I thank you so much for that psalm. Amen. God, you know what that psalm means to me in Psalm 32. Yes. In the life of David, may we take these sweet psalms, Lord, apply it to our hearts and our lives, Lord, Amen. when we get into those situations ourselves. God, we've all sinned and come short of your glory. God, just help us to keep that repentant heart. Always that repentant attitude, Lord, as we strive to Amen. seek fellowship, restore fellowship to you in each of our lives. God, I beg you to give us all the ear to hear what your spirit wants to speak to us about tonight. Yes. God, I'm going to be amiss if I don't thank you, Lord, for my daughter through surgery. Those who have faced surgery this week and trust you with Matt today. And Amen. God, I do pray, Lord, you keep your hand of grace upon our church. Amen. You're forever faithful. Thank you again for those new mercies today that you've given, given me, and I trust in all of our lives today. Yes, thank Lord, you, Lord. be with our pastor. We thank you, God, for him. Continue to give him that fresh oil. Amen. Minister to him as he ministers to us, God. We love you and thank you for all that you do. Save that soul that's nearest to hell tonight, God. We'll be sure to praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Todd. Let's worship the Lord tonight. <laughs>
Let's all stand while the choir's uh, coming down. Stand, turn around, shake somebody's hand tonight. Greet somebody, welcome someone tonight in the service. you should have been able to shake at least five hands amen and smile at ten people amen and tell three you loved them and two you forgave them amen that never preach amen boy I enjoyed those choir songs tonight I told brother John I said that first one I don't know that well yet beautiful song but that is almost a sermon and uh, I, I was trying to look down to words, and John kept moving the book up and down. I was losing track of that, so you just say amen on them kind. Uh, but uh, that second song, man, that's an oldie there. That's a good one. Every time we sing that, I kind of go back to, to my ball playing days. That song said, in safe I shall be. I remember back when I played baseball, uh, when we played at Pine Hall, we always loved to whip up on the Walnut Cove and Sandy Ridge and Germanton teams. It was just no better feeling in the world than to do that. And, uh, and uh, I remember we was playing a tournament. This was my little moment of glory in my junior high years. We was playing in a tournament at Lions Park, Walnut Cove. And I was on third base. The game was tied. There was two outs. It was championship game of the tournament. We were playing the best Walnut Cove team they could put on the field. And the catcher missed the ball. And it took off off of, his, off of his guard there and was headed down the third baseline. And my third base coach, Donald Joyce, he said, don't go. I didn't listen to a thing he said. <laughs> well, Greg, I took off. I was pretty fast back in them days. Pretty decent now for my age. But you know what? I took off down that line. He kept yelling, come back. I said in my mind, I ain't going back. I'm, I'm going for it. And you know what? That ball went back, and I could hear the third baseman pick it up, and he slung it, and I seen it coming to that catcher, and I watched him, and I, I was a head first guy, and I went in there head first, Brother Greg. The dust was flying. I knew it was close. I was scared to look up, and I looked up, and they looked at me. That umpire said, safe. And as we won that game, and boy, I felt so good that day. And as we was walking back to the car, Don Joyce put his arm around me. He said, you better thank God you was safe. <laughs> he said, because boy, I'd have killed you. <laughs> hey, that's nothing. It's all vain glory. But it's all about being safe in Christ. Amen. That's what it matters. And you know why I know I'm safe? August 11th, 1993, I got saved, which makes me safe in him now. Amen. Beautiful old song there, amen. Thought I'd share that little moment in life with you. You give a listen tonight as Cassie sings a couple songs for us, and then we'll take some prayer requests and do our offering, and then we'll be in Psalm 51 for our study, okay? God's hand in mine 
in season by season I watch him amaze in all of the mysteries of his perfect ways and all I have need of his hand will provide he's always been faithful to me now I can't remember a trial or a pain he did not recycle to bring me gain oh and I can remember one single regret in serving God only and trusting His hand. Because all I have need of, His hand will provide. He's always been faithful to me. And great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. And there is no shadow of turning with thee. This is my anthem, and this is my song. The theme of the stories I've heard for so long. My God has been faithful. He will be again. Loving compassion, it knows no end. And all I have need of, His hand will provide. He's always been faithful to me. to me they came to Egypt seeking bread but regret is what they found instead as they stood before the one they had betrayed as they looked into their brother's face I'm sure their minds began to race and I know within their hearts they were afraid. Joseph held their lives within his hands. He could take revenge with one command. But the words he spoke left them. I see things as I should. Though at times I did not understand. It was part of his determined plan. He's worked all things together like he said he would. God meant it all for good. Now 
I face some valleys of my own and nights in which I felt alone and it seemed I'd never see the light of day oh but what was in the darkest of that place I found in him sufficient grace giving strength to help me make it on my way and though the road I trod was rough and long he still put within my heart this song so I can stand before you now and say God meant it all for good looking back on what he brought me through I see things as I should and though at times I did not understand it was part of his determined plan he's worked all things together like he said he would God meant it all for good and though at times I did not understand it was part of his determined plan he's worked all things together like he said he would God meant it all for good and God meant it all for good Amen I'm glad he did Sometime or another, we may do a Wednesday night study from the book of Genesis on the life of Joseph. Boy, you think about all the things that happened to him. Uh, you know, it's amazing. You read stories of people in the Bible. Joseph wasn't a perfect man, but here's the beauty of his life. The Bible doesn't disclose all of his faults and failures. Think about that. Most people you find in the Bible, it does. Joseph's my favorite Old Testament character in the Word of God. All the things that happened to him the jealousy in his family, the hatred, almost really, you might as well say the attempted murder and taking of his life, sold as a slave. He goes to work for a man that was really a good man, treating him well, but he had a daytime soap opera wife. Yeah, and boy, she wanted to sleep with that handsome young Hebrew boy, and he refused, left his members only coat laying behind. She tore it up a little bit. Scratched herself a little bit with them fingernails she had like cats, like a lion. Go ahead and say that with me, amen. Lioness. And uh, boy, came up with all them lies when her husband got back from that business trip. And then they put Joseph in prison. Everything I've read and studied over the years beyond what the scripture even teaches and the accounts and the commentary probably spent a minimum of 10 years in prison. 10 years of his life. But at the end, he could look at his brothers while he's sitting second in command over the land of Egypt and help save much people alive, the Bible said. He said, you know what? God meant it all for good. We don't understand all of that. I told a man Monday down in Lexington, he was telling me, me and J.R. and Mike went down there and he was telling us his testimony. And I said, you know what? Your life is a lot like watching a good old maybe Christmas parade or Thanksgiving parade. I said, you just get to see the part that's in front of you. But God sees where the parade starts, where it's at, and where it comes to an end. I'm glad he sees that, Benny. Amen. I appreciate those songs tonight. Um, we'll start over here to my right. Anybody have a praise report, prayer request, or a brief testimony tonight? Anybody? I just want to thank the Lord for saving me. Amen, Keisha. Amen. 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 Thanks for sharing that. Anybody else over here? Yep.
Amen. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yep. Amen. 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 It's good. Anybody else over here tonight? All right, how about in the middle? I feel like an auctioneer. I'm trying to get me a bid tonight. Okay. On Friday. All right, let's remember that prayer request. Anybody else here in the middle tonight? All right. How about over here to my left? All right, let's remember Brother Greg's special tonight. Brother Todd? Amen. 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 Anyone else over here? Tina? Amen. 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 Anyone else? Jr. Amen. Amen. Remember Dave and LaDonna. Amen. Just remember that request. Anybody else? If you would, uh, continue to pray for my, my nephew, Matt. They went today to see the surgeon. Um, still waiting to hear from them. I, I wasn't able to get an answer there, but if you would, remember... Uh, remember him in prayer, and uh, if you would remember Mama and Robert in prayer, they're both right now got a lot of decline in health issues right now. That's Robert had to go for something with his hip today, just kind of unexpected. So they got they got a lot of uh, physical ailments right now, and um, so remember them in prayer. Pray for Sister Deborah. She's got a back surgery coming up. She reached out to me and Stephanie today. She's got a back surgery coming up pretty quickly, Friday, April the twenty sixth. So if you would remember uh, Deborah in prayer, continue to pray for Cindy Lively as well as she's trying to recover from her surgery. And then uh, many other requests and needs. I know a lot of you pray for Brother Todd with his cancer. And uh, we want to pray for Alvina and Brother Tommy back here as well uh, in their day-to-day -day battles with this. So many people battling sickness and illness, you know that. And uh, be thankful, be grateful every day that you wake up. Uh, I, I try to stress people. I, I stopped in the milk bar. Anybody know where the milk bar is at? If you don't see me, I'll take you there and you can buy supper. It's worth it. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, uh, I, I stopped in there. I stopped in there the other night. And I like kidding with them young people there at the counter because sometimes they're just so busy punching numbers. I'm an eye contact person. And uh, and young lady, she said, hey, how you doing? I said, I'm doing really good. She said, what do you mean by that? I said, A, nobody's planning my funeral right now, and I'm getting ready to get a decent meal. That's pretty good. Amen. 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 And if you're not out the hospital and tubes running down your throat, uh, you're doing pretty good. You're sitting on the church pew and not a bar stool tonight. You're doing pretty good. Amen. And so let's be grateful, be thankful for the things that God's given us in life, our health, our strength, food we have, clothes on our body, transportation. And I go on and on and on with this tonight. 
But the uh, Lord's good to us. Don't ever lose sight of that. That's why a lot of times in a service like this, look, just, just give him a quick brief word of praise. I promise you in heaven, I don't know how it is, but I can just imagine over here somebody's, hey, over here, over here. And that one gets done testifying to the goodness of God. Over here, I got a word. And it's just on and on and on. A lot of times down here, we got a word, but it ain't a word for God. Learn to have a word for God every day. You never know who God's going to put you in front of, who you can be a light to, who you can be a witness to, who you can share your testimony with. The Bible says we're to always be ready for that. Be always ready to give an answer to somebody. Why do you believe what you believe? What do you mean you believe in eternal life? What does that word saved mean? What are you talking about? You know, well, the preacher said, no, 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 don't leave me out of it. That's between you and God. Amen? Amen. Brag on the goodness of God in your life every day. Lord's good to us. Let's take time to pray tonight for some of our needs. I do want to give you a quick word of praise tonight. and probably share it again this weekend. Uh, the man we went and saw Monday evening. To, I've been looking all school year. I told the man, I said, man, the Lord must be trying my patience, if anything. But uh, I've been looking all school year just about try to off and on find some decent school lockers for these kids, especially the upper grades, not the little ones. that want something all junky and beat all to pieces. And, uh, but the Lord worked it out. And uh, we were able to get 36 brand new school lockers. Uh, if we paid full price without tax, it would have been $4,200. But the Lord worked it out for $1,200. And man saved us $3,000. I say to God be the glory. Those are the little things that sometimes we overlook in life. You know what? God is sending so many blessings into this church. But if we're not careful, we nag and we complain and we murmur. Be careful with that kind of thing. Okay, uh, always focus on the glass being half full instead of half empty. Always focus on all the blessings instead of the burdens, and you won't go wrong in life. Amen. If you would like to join us around the altar for prayer here for just a moment, we'll pray, or you can pray there at your seat. Pick up one of the sheets for our A April. April, yeah, I was going to say May. Uh, April uh, prayer request or many needs on those papers. And let's just take time to pray and take some of these needs and burdens to the Lord. And uh, let's lift up some of our shut-in people, our sick people, and the needs within our church families. We take just a, a few moments to pray here together, okay? Father God, we come in your presence tonight with this privilege of prayer. God, very thankful tonight, God, for every blessing that's come our way. Lord, it's so easy to want to focus on the burdens, so easy to want to Focus on the trials, the troubles, the tribulation. Lord, you said all those things would come. But God, help us to keep our focus on you. And God, I believe on every page and every verse of your word is your glory. And so, Lord, as we look at your word tonight here in a few moments, may we see your glory. Uh, Lord, we want to see you high and lifted up for who you are. And God, without you, we couldn't even walk, God, unless you hold a hand. And God, we're thankful tonight, God, for this privilege of prayer, privilege of praise. God, we're thankful tonight, God, Lord, that you've blessed us to wake up to see another day. Your mercy was new early this morning, and God, it'll be new again in the morning as well. And God, we come before you tonight, Lord, with many needs within our family here, our church family. Uh, Lord, there are a lot of people battling sickness, illness, cancer, disease, people with surgeries and trying to recover from surgeries. God, all this is in your hand. You're, you're the one that made us. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. Lord, I'm thankful tonight, Lord, you keep up with our heartbeats. God, you keep up with our brain activity, our minds, our thinking. Lord, we don't always understand why things happen, but Lord, they do. But God, I believe, Lord, you love us too much to hurt us on purpose. God, we're in your hand tonight, and your hand's a loving hand. Sometimes it's a chastening hand, but always for our good and your glory. God, we come before you tonight, Lord, I ask you to strengthen, Lord, the people in this church that serve, that minister, that labor. Help us to strive together for your cause, for your glory. I pray tonight you be with the ones over in the Master's Club that are teaching these little children, those in nursery, those that are ministering to these teenagers tonight. And Lord, those of us over here, help us, Lord, to see the truth tonight from Psalm 51, that you would open our eyes to things, Lord, that maybe we haven't seen. And God, I pray tonight, God, that this church would ever be what you'd have it to be in this life. Help us to be a light, to be salt in this community, this town. Uh, Lord, as new people move in, help them to see Christ in us. As visitors stop by, Lord, may they say, this is the church that I want to be part of. May Christ be exalted, may he be lifted up tonight. 
Use us tonight for your glory, for your honor. Strengthen our faith, encourage our hearts. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If our ushers will come, we'll receive our, our Wednesday evening offering tonight. I believe George Beverly Shea is going to play. I mean, Brother Jay is going to play. Amen. Uh, <laughs> I believe they're going to play an instrumental for us tonight. But uh, let's ask the Lord's blessing over this offering. Brother Benny, would you pray for us? Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. That's right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. No, I'm just <laughs> Y'all better be glad I can't play like that. I'd be done stood up over there and hitting them keys. Amen. Spin around. Amen. Throw a song book up in the air. Switch out with Charles and get back to it. Amen. Appreciate you men. Amen. Look in your Bible in Psalm 51 tonight. Two, three weeks ago, I think it was, we started this, maybe four now. I know we skipped last week. I was over in the... Uh, and uh, the, the green grass country home of Tennessee somewhere, amen. Uh, but uh, our first message we dealt with was on our response to God. We saw from Second Samuel chapter 12 how David responded when Nathan the prophet came by the, the palace about a year later after David's sin uh, of adultery and sin of murder and many other things that he covered up. And then two weeks ago, we dealt with the second message on opening the door of David's soul. We saw how David began to open up that door to his very soul. Amen. And uh, tonight, we're going to look at the multitude of thy tender mercies. Look in Psalm 51 and verse number one with me. 
And uh, our God tonight is a God of tender mercies. Amen? I'm very thankful for that. I hope you'll leave here tonight with a better understanding of God's tender mercies. Amen? Uh, let me give you a, a definition, a biblical definition of the word tender. Tender gives us the meaning of being very sensible to impression. Being sensible to pain. It gives us the meaning of being susceptible to love, to have compassion, to show kindness, to be pitiful, to be easily affected by the distress of another. Ain't that beautiful? It means to be anxious for another's good. So look what he says here. He said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy, of thy tender, of thy, in other words, of thy love, of thy compassion, of thy kindness. Uh, uh, Lord, uh, your pity that you show upon men, your anxious care for me. Notice he said, of thy tender mercies, and then he said, blot out my transgressions. But it also gives us the idea of being easily excited to pity. In other words, God is excited to show you pity in life. Amen? It goes further. It means he'll forgive you. It means he'll show you favor. Remember Sunday night, I was talking in the message, it's a difference in God showing you favor or favoritism. Favor says, I want to be good to you because I see something in you. I want to be there for you. I want to aid you. I want to help you. The cry for mercy is a cry for help. You ever cried out for help? I remember when I thought I was drowning at Hanging Rock State Park as a little boy, I wanted to cry out, help. I'm glad God's mercy got me out of that lake that day. But the cry of David in Psalm 51 is his own recognition of guilt. I don't know if you've ever came to God after you messed up and you, 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 you got along with the Lord and, 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 and you cried out from your heart, the way David did here. I've had a lot of people all the time over the years, Christian people have called me, have talked to me, have met with me, and I've met with them, and they, it's almost like they want me to fix it. I can't always do that. But I always tell them, look, you don't have to tell it to me. you got to tell it to him. you got to get along with him. And the cry of David here is his own recognition of guilt. See, too many times in the Christian life, we're too busy looking at everybody else and trying to throw out their guilt. David said here, this is my guilt. It's a desire to escape certain judgment. It's the expression of his soul to be right with God. David's need was great, church. He had sinned with a high hand. Against God. Wait a minute. He had sinned against the very God that had showered him with countless blessings. Countless benefits in his life. Just like us, his sin was inexcusable. Too many times when people mess up, they want to blame everybody but themselves. Be careful with that. If you're in a mess tonight, look at you. It ain't mama's fault. It ain't daddy's fault. It's not the preacher's fault. I can't be everywhere. Just look at yourself. When preachers mess up, it's not the congregation's fault. They got to look at theirself. God had showered him with blessings. But by the time you get to Psalm 51 and lay a little foundation tonight, he had finally reached the point where he took all the blame. Instead of blaming everybody else. Look back with me at a couple things here. As you read this psalm, you're going to find, and I don't know, again, if you, if you don't like to mark your Bible, then don't mark it. But I would recommend sometimes you do. I'm in a world of trouble if I get to heaven and God said you wasn't supposed to do that. 
But you're going to find this psalm, Brother Benny, it is full of the words uh, 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 me and my and mine all the way through the 19 verses. Notice with me the first three again. We looked at these briefly the other week. He said, have mercy upon, notice me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to thy multitude of tender mercies, blot out, notice, mark this one, my transgressions, wash, third one here, me, thoroughly from Fourth one, mine iniquity, and cleanse me. Fifth one, from my sixth one there, sin. For I acknowledge my, there it is again, the seventh time, transgressions, and my, the eighth time, sin is ever before me. The ninth time. Nine times in three verses of Scripture. God says to David, let's focus on you. And David said, it's, it's, it's me, God. It's me. It's my sin. It's not Bathsheba's sin. It's my sin. It's not Uriah's sin. It's my sin. In this psalm, David is not blaming his heredity. Let's pause there. Too many people want to blame their daddy. Too many people want to bring, uh, blame grandpa or the way we were brought up. Or, well, if my daddy was a drunkard or my daddy didn't care or my daddy didn't say I love you. Look here, my daddy's been gone out of this life 30 years. Daddy's generation of men, at least the men I knew in my life, when I laid down at night, daddy didn't come in there and tuck me in. He didn't come in there and say, hey, son, good night, love you, get a good night's sleep, kiss me on the cheek. If he ever kissed me at all, I don't remember it. But I ain't losing sleep over it tonight either. Just understand that David is not blaming his heredity. He's not blaming society. He's not blaming his fallen nature. He said, it's full responsibility on me. One of the best ways to get right with God is just take the responsibility. And the only way for any of us tonight, church, to begin to see the seriousness of sin, look, is just to get a better look of who God truly is. The, the, the more you can get a better look at who God is, the more you'll see ain't none of us clean on our own. Uh, so many times we, so many times we, we, we want to confess the outward things that we get seen doing or get caught doing, but very rare do we want to confess the inward things that nobody sees but us and God. Most Christians think sin is just something they can enjoy just a little, well, the preacher, you're just too dogmatic. I don't see nothing wrong with that. Or they get in the car and say, well, that was what he says. I don't like to be one of those he said preachers. I want to stick to the Bible. But most Christians, especially in today's generation, now look, there's some of you been saved long and I've been living. I think you relate a little better to what I'm preaching, but in modern day Christianity, too many Christians wear their feelings on their shoulders. It's some mushy, it's emotions all the time. Yeah. Least little old thing, boom, sets them off like a bomb. We just need a toughness again in Christianity. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But, but, but most Christians think it's just a little something we get to enjoy just a little as, as long as they don't get too deep into it. God help us to have a healthy fear of sin again. Having a healthy fear of God will always bring about a healthy fear of sin. The more I see God for who He is, the less likely I want to do wrong. Each of us need to leave here tonight, if nothing else, with a better understanding of the seriousness of sin. David's caused him some shame. It caused sorrow. Think about this. It brought reproach on the entire nation of Israel. The greatest earthly king to ever live has brought shame and reproach upon his country. You look at society today, you look at the average politician, they could care less. Most of them don't even believe in God. They don't even follow God. You live in a country now that's in such a mess when people can stand in New York City and burn that flag there and stomp it on the ground and wave their Palestinian flag, you got a mess. 
You hear me, you got a mess. I've, look, before I got saved and since I got saved, I think you ought to be locked up and put behind prison to bearing the flag of this country. That's just my opinion. Let's get back to some Christianity tonight. Now, David's sin caused shame and sorrow and reproach, and the enemy got attention, and the enemy got opportunity, Brother Benny, to blaspheme the name of God. And in the process, watch now, a baby died. A daughter later on is going to be raped and she's going to be molested by her half-brother and, and, and that guy's going to be killed by his stepbrother and then the stepbrother Absalom, he's going to be filled with rebellion. He's going to leave the kingdom. He's going to rise up against David and steal the kingdom and then going to be hunted down and killed like a wild animal by David's soldiers. And all because of one night of pleasure... The sword never left David's home. And the sword never left his heart. And it all began with just a lingering, lustful look. In our day, just a little stop too long on a website. I told those upper grade kids at school this morning, I don't mind you bringing your phone, but it's to be turned in as soon as you get in the building. I don't want to risk a kid looking at your phone and you and that kid both enjoying some temptation or some pleasure that's wicked. You understand that? Now, I, I, look, I know we live in a day and time where these things are about everybody's life. And I, I don't know how you're functioning in today's world if you don't have one, but maybe you can. But what I'm trying to say tonight is the sword never left David's home. It never left his heart. And it all started with just a little short, lingering, lustful look. And David's sin, like so many others, you know what it began to do? It began to multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply. What began with lust in his heart towards Bathsheba, he desired her. He brought her to himself. And then he committed adultery with her. And watch this. The, dom the dominoes then began to fall, didn't they? It's coveting. Now it's lying and deceiving and covering up and murder. Now listen, listen. Sin, sin always takes us farther than we want to go. And it always keeps us, don't it? Longer than we want to stay. And by the way, if you don't get anything out of the message tonight, don't forget what I'm about to say. There's no such thing as some little sin. Well, I just had a, I just had a, a little jealousy. It ain't as bad as that guy over there. He got a DWI. Well, there's no such thing as your little jealousy being smaller than his DWI. When we sin... And you will. That's why the Bible says you've got an advocate with the Father. We are to look God in the face and say, I'm doing what I want to do now. That's the mindset that we get when we sin and we don't want to make it right. David's sin, Brother Todd, ought to be a warning to all of us tonight. Would you write this down with the help of the Lord? Three things. Number one, God's mercy is our humble method. When we mess up, God's mercy is to be our humble method that we use to get back to God. Let's go, 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 go with me now. Now, David's strong and powerful position as king is what helped get him into trouble. You say, well, preacher, what, what do you mean? Maybe David thought he was above the rules. You know, in the world we live in, the sports stars, the Hollywood crowd, the upper level politician thinks they're kind of sometimes above the rules. Hold my soul. I told Stephanie last night to uh, I, I maybe caught when I got home uh, late, maybe caught 15, 20 minutes of something here. We were watching a little documentary on that uh, anniversary of the O.J. Simpson trial. I said, my soul, I don't feel like getting in the flesh before I go to bed. But just because we're sometimes celebrity status doesn't mean that we're above the law of God. 
We may get smooth talking lawyers to get us out of something, but at the end of the day, all men meet a thrice holy God, and at the end of the day, we always reap what we sow, don't we? Authority and power always gives uh, uh, some little temptation to go along with it, uh, 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 beyond what we should normally see it as. And don't forget that David said, Have mercy upon me, God. Let's go in our Bibles, if you would, and look with me tonight over in the book of Isaiah. Keep your place there. We'll come back in a moment, but I want you to go to Isaiah chapter number 6. See, David in Psalm 51, he never started with his sin. He started with God. See, sometimes if we're not careful, we, we want to say, Lord, forgive this and forgive this and forgive this and forgive this. I'm not saying don't do that, but why not start with God? Why not start with God and let God know what He already knows about Himself and now you're just recognizing it. See, if we're ever going to see the seriousness of it, Brother Benny, we're going to have to see God as we should. This is why I'm asking you to go to Isaiah. Look at chapter 6 with me. Boy, if we'd ever grasp this concept as Christians so many times when we mess up. The Bible says in Isaiah 6 and verse 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah said, notice, I saw. What did I just say about David? David started with God. He saw God for who God was. When he was laying in Bathsheba's arms, when he was committing adultery, when he was writing that little letter out to have her husband killed, he wasn't seeing God. All he was seeing was the pleasures of sin for a season. But friend, when it called up to him at the end of the day and he didn't have anywhere to run and hide anymore, now he sees God instead of David. Notice he said in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple and above it stood the seraphim. He said each one had six wings with twain he covered his face and with twain he covered his feet and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Uh, who, notice he said the whole earth is full of his glory, and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the Bible said the house was filled with smoke. God help us to see God the way Isaiah saw it. God's a holy God tonight. He's a sinless God tonight. And when we sin, whether it be in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds and actions, You'll never get where you need to be with God again until you see God again first. Keep your place there. Go to Psalm 136, almost back to where we need to be at Psalm 51. I want you to look at Psalm 136. The way any of us get back to God is God. And I'm trying to show you that with the Bible tonight. Don't believe it because I said it. You want to get back to God, you can. Look, I, I, I've got somebody either tonight or in the morning sometime when I get a break that I've got to have a long talk with on the phone that needs some help. You know what I'm going to tell them? Same thing I'm telling you in this church service tonight. Notice what it says here in Psalm 136. Uh, I'm not going to read all of this, but I want you to see the mercy of God here. He said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He's good, for His mercy endureth forever. Give thanks unto the God of gods. For why? Why, preacher? Why do I give thanks to God? For His mercy endureth forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. Why? For His mercy endureth forever. To Him who alone doeth great wonders. For His mercy endureth forever. To Him that by wisdom made the heavens. For His mercy endureth forever. To Him that stretched out the earth above the waters. For His mercy endureth forever. To Him that made great lights. For His mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day. For His mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night. For His mercy endureth forever. To Him that made Egypt in their firstborn. For His mercy endureth forever. And brought out of Israel from among them. For His mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand. With a stretched out arm. For His mercy endureth forever forever. Amen. And we could read the rest of that, but what I want you to see is the psalmist said, there's a God in heaven that hung the sun, the moon, the stars, and the planets. There's a God in heaven tonight. If He can keep order out of all of that things, uh, and if your life's in disorder and disarray tonight, if you'll come back to God and see God for
for who He is and not your sin and not what you think you are or where you think you ought to be. Just start by seeing God first. Amen. Amen. David was a giant slayer. He was a man that escaped the hand of a jealous king named Saul. He knew God had blessed him, church, to be king. He knew God had called him to lead the Israelites. But how in the world could a man of that stature ever fail? By now, he's trying to find his way back. And so many times, like David, you say, Preacher, how can we regain what we lose when we sin? The methods found in humbling ourselves and realizing that our God is a God of mercy. Amen? You say, Preacher, what makes that possible? Oh, hallelujah, I'm glad you asked. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ paid the payment for your dirty sin and mine. And that payment goes beyond human comprehension. There's not a person in this room that can comprehend it fully. You hear me tonight? The Bible says this. Don't forget this. This is one of these verses for many years of my 30 plus years of being a Christian. Brother Pee Wee, I've struggled with this verse and I've struggled with this verse and I've struggled with this verse. I wish I could give you a better explanation tonight than what I can give, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Your Bible says in Matthew 27 and 46, the Bible said Jesus cried out on the cross. Remember, he's beat beyond recognition. He's stripped down naked. He's got blood flowing out everywhere you can think of you can see his inner organs tonight you can see the you can see his bones you uh, there's a crown of thorns on his head Uh, uh, they have beat him to a bloody pulp if you'd have walked by that cross that day you'd say how in the world is that man ever even alive and able to talk But yet in Matthew chapter 27 and verse number 46, before he took his last breath, I'm glad that day he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Wait a minute. I can't wrap my mind around that verse. God? Forsaken God? Yet your Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, For He hath made Him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Amen. Because of Jesus Christ tonight, there's there's enough mercy to go around for you and to me and for 8 billion people on the planet. Why? Because He said, God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, On the cross when He said that, He became me. He became you. Uh, He became the sinner that we are. And no sin ever got to His soul because the soul that sinned shall surely die. He went to hell not to go and suffer in my place and your place. Joyce Myers tell you that in her book but now listen to me tonight he went as a conqueror Amen. Amen. he went there and got the keys to the place he beat the devil up at his own game and the demons of hell at their own game and he came forth as a conqueror Amen. the Bible said he became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him and because of that look at me there's enough mercy Every time you mess up. Now look at me. You might be a Christian tonight. If you are, say amen. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, even in this life as a Christian, though your sins are paid for, every time you mess up down here, you'll always reap what you sow. Amen? But the payment for our sin, which is death, that's already been took care of. Amen? Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. If you're a Christian, that's been took care of. You may take your last breath down here in your earthly body, draw its last breath, but you'll be more alive than you ever was. Amen? Amen. Revelation 20.14 says one day that death and hell is going to be cast in a lake of fire. This is the second death. But your Bible also says that God is just and the justifier. Amen? And 1 John 1, 9 says if we'll confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? All because Jesus Christ paid my sin debt on the cross at Calvary. And as a Christian, hallelujah, I'm not going to pay for my sins in eternity. They got to be paid for somewhere. We either take the payment that was made 2,000 years ago or we pay for them ourselves. But somebody's got to pay for them. Amen? Man, I remember when I was a little boy, we'd get done selling tobacco out there at Pepper's Warehouse in Winston-Salem. That was back in the good old days. 
I could always tell when it sold good, Brother Mike. Daddy come out of that warehouse, man, he was smiling like a possum in a briar patch. He'd say, y'all want to go over to Three Guys? Anybody ever heard of Three Guys grocery store? Oh, my soul, we would go in there, man. We was on a big old flatbed truck. Time we'd leave there, man. Look, I felt like, I felt like we owned Winston-Salem, man, pushing shopping carts and buggies. Uh, on, on sale day, it didn't matter how many groceries we got. But boy, he wasn't selling anything, man. It just seemed like he was nitpicking everything, drinking them check colas. Yeah, look at me. I'm just saying your sin tonight, somebody's got to pay for it. It's very expensive, but yet Jesus paid it all. That's why we sing all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but thank God he washed it white as snow. Amen? All because of that sin debt he paid for. And as a Christian, I'm not going to pay for mine because he's already paid it for me. Does that make sense to anybody besides me? See, to pay for your sins means you've got to go to hell for them. But Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. Read Revelation. He said, i got the keys to the place. But I'm going to tell you this before we go to the second thing. You can and you will reap the sin that you sin in this life. And we always reap more than we sow. Would you write down the second thing real quick? God's mercy, number one, David said, is our humble method. Number two, God's mercy is our hopeful move. Go back to verse number one of the psalm. Notice what he said there. He said, according, according to what? Thy loving kindness. Now, that's a beautiful phrase. Amen. Loving kindness. You know what loving kindness is? Look at me. It's tender regard. It's mercy, it's favor again. David had a truckload of transgressions. But because of God's love and kindness, God had a multitude of mercies to offset David's truckload of transgressions. Look what he says again in the verse. He said, blot out my transgressions. In other words, David wanted God to do what needed to be done so that nothing remained in his sin. In other words, in other words, look here. If, if, if this right here is, is, is David's sin that's against him that day, David said, hey God, why don't you just go ahead and blot it all out? Get rid of it. Don't leave it on my record. Hallelujah. Amen. David said, God, please cleanse me. You say, well, a preacher, can the sinner ever be clean again? The answer is yes. What a blessing to know that our sins can be blotted out. Let me pause there for just a moment. I believe there are people in this room and people over there in the other building tonight and people that will pop in here on Sunday. You struggle with your past. You won't get on with the future and the present. You struggle due to your past, maybe the mistakes you made. And you struggle to forget things that that's already been forgiven. That doesn't mean you haven't been forgiven. You hear me now? God is there in His Word to help us with our thoughts. I want you to go to Ephesians chapter 4. If there's ever one thing in the Bible I wished every Christian at this church and every church in America that was a true Christian... What a blessing Christianity would be if we would get a hold of this and really, truly practice it. The same God that's forgiven you is the same God that expects you to forgive other people. You say, preacher, you just don't, just stop. I don't need to know it. Now, a little like about all of us shot our hand up a while ago and said, yeah, I'm a Christian. You wouldn't be if He didn't forgive you. And you know what He expects us to do? No ifs, ands, and buts. Well, you don't know how they... No, nobody's treated you as bad as we all treated God. Amen. Now watch the verse. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. He said, let all, not some, let all, all means what? All. Let all bitterness, get it out, kill it. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. 
He said, why, why are you getting that all out of the closet? Just go and get that malice. You remember that malice I was talking about, that desire to want to see people suffer? He said, just get that out of the closet too. Well, preacher, they talk bad about my family. Sure they did. That's why he said, go and get it out. Look at ver look next verse. And be ye kind one to another. Hmm. Well, you was running well, wasn't you? Be ye kind one to another. He didn't say argue out here. He didn't say argue back here. He didn't say fall out with this one. He didn't say quit sitting where that one sits. And every time they sit here, you move over there. Every time they sit here, you move back there. I mean, this ain't some little chess match between you and God and the devil and the people that you can't get right with. No. If I'm saved, I'm forgiven. Remember, I ain't got to pay for them sins. But if I am forgiven, then I better learn to practice what I got. And that's forgive everybody else. Look, look what it says. Be kind one to another. Remember what we were talking about a while ago? According to thy tender mercies. Look what he says for you to do. Just go and be tender hearted. Oh my soul, I should have never thought that about you. I am so sorry I said that about you. Please forgive me. Would you please? Well, I ain't doing that, pride. The Bible says that stuff goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Notice, notice. Forgiven. What does that say? Forgiven one another. And boy, here's the... If he just left this out. No, he wants to remind you. Even as God. Well, he didn't have to forgive you, but I'm going to tell you why. He did it for Christ's sake. The one that I said a while ago was hanging on the cross that became sin for us though he knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. God said, I'm going to tell you what I'll do. I'm going to forgive everybody at True Gospel Baptist Church that's saved and everybody else outside this church, but I'm only going to do it for one reason, and that's for Christ's sake. Amen. 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 The Bible says, have also forgiven you. Now listen. Regardless of what someone does to you or your children or your family or your best friend or to the preacher or what the preacher does to you. Some preachers are mean-spirited. I preach with passion, but I'm not mean-spirited. I hate sin. I hate the devil. I hate, I hate with anger Righteous anger, what it does to families, what it does to mamas and little children. When daddy comes home drunk, beating on mama, kids running and hiding, what them drugs do to people, how that fentanyl is killing people and killing off a generation of young people. Amen. Amen. What this sex trafficking crowd's doing to children, it burns me up. But I don't want to be mean-spirited as a preacher. It, it, it'd help a lot of preachers to learn get in the pulpit and just ask the whole congregation to forgive them. Amen! Amen. God says forgive them. And then you pray and you seek the face of God and have the attitude toward people that God had toward you. And that says forgive. I promise you, there will always be people that will disagree with you. At this church and outside this church. But that doesn't mean we get mean-spirited. Just remember, the mercy of God is our hopeful move in life. David said, my only hope is in the mercy of God. Amen? Quickly, look at Lamentations chapter 3. Old Testament. 
Lamentations chapter number 3. You say, is there a Lamentations in there? Yeah. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. By the time you get through all of the book of Jeremiah, he's still weeping and crying over the sins of a nation after 52 chapters. And look what he says in Lamentations chapter number 3 with me. Notice what your Bible says in verse number 21. The Bible said, This I recall to my... Would you mark this next word? It's so crucial when we're trying to get back to God. He said, This I recall to my... What's the next word? Mind. Therefore, haven't I hope? Now, what am I talking about in this point here on the message, preacher? I'm talking about God's mercy is our hope. What does is, what is Jeremiah say again? Look at the verse. He said, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I, next word, hope. Look at verse 20, verse 22. He said, it's of the Lord's, what's the next word? Mercies. They were not consumed. Because his compassions fail not, they're new every morning. Hallelujah! Great is thy faithfulness! Do you realize what Jeremiah is saying? Brother Mike, he's saying what you and I call to our mind brings us hope because of the Lord's mercies and His unfailing compassion. He said because of that, God, we're not consumed. David knew that. That's why he cried out in Psalm 51, 1, according to thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Amen? If it wasn't for the mercy of God, we'd all be in a world of trouble. You know why? Hebrews 12, 29 says our God's a consuming fire. God was wanting to consume the Babylonians in the book of Habakkuk. And Habakkuk cried out, God, in your wrath, remember mercy. The only hope for any of us is the mercy of God. Look at the last thing in five minutes, number three, if you'll write this down. So number one, God's mercy is our humble method. God's mercy is our hopeful move. But please understand the last thing. God's mercy is our honest motive. Go back with me this time to Romans 12. When I sign all those Gideon Bibles at the hotel, I always put this verse. <laughs> Amen. You'll get that in a little bit. <laughs> Amen. I want them to know who was in that room. Yeah. Romans chapter number 12, why don't you look at verse number 1. He said, I, I, I beseech you, I beg you, brethren. Paul said, here's how I'm begging you. By the mercies of God. Now let's pause there. As bad as we were, the mercies of God stepped in. Romans 5, 8 said, but God commendeth, God, God put upon, God pressed upon, God laid upon, God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And after you got saved, Romans chapter number 8 and verse 39 said, Whoa, wait a minute. If Romans 5, 8 can be that good to Benny Mangus, if Romans 5, 8 can be that good to Mike uh, East, if Romans 5, 8 can be that good to Doug Roberts back there, I'm going to get somebody over here. If Romans 5, 8 can be as good to Jr. and Donnie back there and Greg and Todd, if it can be that good to you, hold on. Uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 39 said, Wait a minute. Let me get in on it. You say, well, what's that verse got to say? I'm glad you asked. He said, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. No matter how much you mess up, no matter how many mistakes you make in life, Romans 5, 8 said, I'll die for you. And Romans chapter 8 and verse 39 said, I'll never let you go. Amen. I'll love you all the way to the end. Amen. And after all of that, 
Romans 12.1 said, wait a minute, I don't in on that. And Romans 12.1 said, <laughs> I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Won't you just go on and die to you today so that you might live for Him and live for the person beside you and behind you and in front of you? And won't you just go on in the process, go on and live for that one that you need to forgive in Ephesians 4? And go on and live for that person that's your enemy. And go on and live for your best friend. And go on and live for the people at True Gospel Baptist Church and outside the church. In other words, the one thing that ought to serve as a motive for everything we do is the mercy of God. The basis for everything that I try to do at True Gospel Baptist Church is it for my wife, my children, and you and your children. That's all secondary tonight. I love to go and do and do what I do for the Lord, but the motive for what I try to do around here and what you should do around here is for what you do because you do it for Him. Yeah. On our own, we're like the Apostle Paul. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. We're bad. But look here before we stand. Jesus took every bit of the bad that we deserve so that we might be blessed with all the good that he deserved. I can't understand that, Brother Benny. That's why the Bible says in Romans eight thirty two, he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for Saul. How shall not he, or we, how shall not we with him also, he freely give us all things? As we stand to our feet tonight, well, Jay, if you make your way down, look, we don't serve the Lord in order to receive mercy. We serve the Lord because of His mercy to us. I don't have to do it to get mercy. I'm doing it because I already got it. You understand that? If I got what I deserved, every time I go through Stokesdale, over on that little stretch of Highway 65 where the new buy right's at, when me and my best friend came through that stop sign and he pulled out in front of that car, I'll have to say in my life, that's the closest I've ever come to dying. If I'd have got what I deserved, that would have been the day at 21 years old, God would have put me in a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. But the only reason I can stand here and tell you tonight I'm not going there is because of God's mercy. David said, Lord, According to thy tender mercy. Just blot out all that wrong. And God said, I'll do it. Amen. You search your own heart tonight. I, I'm not asking for heads to be bowed, eyes closed. What does that mercy mean to you, Christian? Does it mean that you go around every day and treat everybody bad? No, no, no. Does it mean you just stay hateful the rest of your life and bitter? No, no, no. You're wasting it. No, it means you show people every day, no matter how bad they are to you, you treat them the way God treats you. That ain't easy in your own. I never said you could do it on your own, but you can do it through the Holy Spirit. And that's the only way you can do it. What I'm preaching tonight ought to be enough to motivate every one of us to serve God, to love God, and to love other people for a lifetime. I remember one time years ago, I won't mention names. I'm going to keep that hidden, but I promise you, I'm telling you a true story here. I led a man to Christ, baptized the man. Listen to me. I led the man to Christ and baptized the man in Christ. That if I had to say I had a top five of hurtful moments the last 30 years in my life, this one's making top three. If I didn't forgive, 
I would have drowned him. Because in my flesh I could. You hear me? They could have arrested me at the church and I just went on to prison. I'm going to tell you something. Though that man hurt me and that man hurt my family, when that man got broken one day, he knew where to come. And that man got forgiveness not only from God, but I had to put my big boy britches on that day, Brother Mike. And I had to forgive him the same way God forgave him. Boy, the devil haunted me with that. said, how could you do that? Mercy, grace, compassion. Same thing God gave me. Same thing God gave you. Don't you ever look at somebody and say, well, I can't forgive her. Yes, you can. I can't forgive him, preacher. Yes, you can. And you best. Or you'll be a miserable man and woman the rest of your life. Amen. While he finishes playing tonight. That's why Jeremiah could say his mercies are new every morning. I'll give you something to think about in the car tonight. I'm going to give you a lot to think about. Some of you looking at me a little different than you were when we first started. That's okay. What's the takeaway tonight with all this preacher? Can I say number one, when you pass sins come to your mind, and they will. Never doubt the forgiveness of God. Did you hear me? The forgiveness of God is much greater than your past sins. Can I tell you the second takeaway I'd take from this tonight? Is when you sin now, and you will as a Christian, immediately cry out to God for mercy. And seek Him for cleansing. You're going to need it. Don't, don't go around dirty. I remember I took a little boy to gospel light camp one time at junior camp. I told the kids and told kids, told the parents, sent notes home, everything. Here's what kids need to bring to camp. We opened up his suitcase in cabin five. Other than a little paperback Bible. Listen to me. It was empty. Now, we're going to be up for five and a half days. Little fella going to need some toothpaste, toothbrush. We maybe survive on deodorant for that age. Little fella didn't have no underclothes. Didn't have no other change of shirts. Nothing. So that's what we'd deal with and we'd pick up in little bus children. You say, what'd you do? I jumped in the car and I ran to Galax or to Hillsville, Virginia. And I found a family dollar. I knew where all them places were at. I'd been up there enough over the years. I just got a little shopping cart like a little fellow was mine. Went in there and found the best size clothes I could get. You say it make you mad? No. Made me mad at the sin of his mama. He walked around in new clothes all week. Played in the creek with the rest of them. But you know what? He was able to get cleaned up at night. Yeah, we need to get clean before God. Third thing I'd get out of this tonight is when you, when you think of where you would be if it wasn't for God's mercy. Won't you let that motivate you tomorrow to go out and serve Him better? If I really got what I deserved, I wouldn't be standing up here tonight. And I wouldn't be preaching to you if you got what you deserved. Amen. That, that's enough to motivate you to come on back Sunday morning. Matter of fact, to go and hit Sunday school. Matter of fact, go and give in the offering. Yeah, let's dismiss now. Amen. Thank you for being here tonight. Boy, I love the Psalms. I love reading after the words God gave the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit gave David to pin down. Amen. Hope you have a good night. Be safe in your travels. Get rested up. Lord willing, uh, teachers that are up here, I know a lot of them are not. Some of them are different places. Keep in mind, we do have a teacher's meeting right after school tomorrow. And um, keep in mind, if you would, quickly coming upon us a week from this Saturday. I think they may have it up there. Could turn it up there, the, the, the blood mobile.
Uh, see Brother Doug. Brother Doug, raise your hand. I know we always got different people. See Brother Doug here. He knows more about that than me, and he's done a great job of that over the years here at this church. And uh, if you'd like to give blood that weekend, then please see him, and he'll tell you what you need to do there, okay? And then the week after that, we'll be having our spring festival, and uh, we'll have more information on that on Sunday, okay? Uh, appreciate again everybody that had a part in helping out with that barbecue fundraiser. Um, I, had, uh, I had a man yesterday in the parking lot pick his kid up, grandkid up from school, and he said, you tell whoever I fixed all that barbecue and stuff, that's some of the best I ever ate. Amen. I said, well, Fuzzies has changed a little bit. No, I can't. <laughs> Amen. I'm kidding. Let's dismiss in prayer. Don't forget your youngins over here across the way. That'd be good if you'd pick them up tonight. Let's dismiss. Brother John Spencer, would you pray for us?